Good afternoon and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 16th of March 2020 and the time has just gone 12.15 GMT and it's been yet another horrendous week in the financial markets. Um, there's uh, loads going on, volatility is absolutely through the roof uh, and we're seeing asset classes of all sorts uh, just being dumped. There's been a massive array uh, of news and information out in the last uh, 24 hours, 48 hours, um, but here are the highlights. Uh, we've had some dreadful figures out of China um, in the, in the overnight. Uh, retail sales dropped by over 20%. Industrial production declined by 13.5%. Fixed asset investment declined by 24.5%. Now, bearing in mind, China... Um, these are these are the stats from the, the, the time period when China was on full lockdown. So traders are fearful the appalling economic indicators that we saw out of China overnight um, is going to be what countries in Europe and possibly North America are in are uh, having the pipeline. If if uh, if countries you know Italy's on lockdown and the likes of Spain s same scenario. If you're innocent, if we go down the lockdown route of several more countries in the West, we could see uh, you know, massive, massive decline in economic activity. And that has been reflected uh, in the huge falls we've been seeing um, in, in, in European stock markets. Uh, in other news, uh, the Federal Reserve took the drastic decision to slash interest rates almost to zero. Uh, they're down at uh, rock bottom levels. They also announced a quantitative easing program of $700 billion. The Reserve Bank of Australia slash interest rates. We've had interest rates cuts uh, from South Korea as well. There's t there is, is penciled in tomorrow. Uh, the European Union are going to have a coordinated conference call in relation to how to deal with this issue. Um, we've had central banks do extreme measures to try and calm the markets, but in fact, we, we, we actually had the opposite response. Um, what I'll quickly do is I'll just very briefly go on the week, week ahead article, and then I'll be focusing on the charts. The week ahead can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, news and analysis, uh, you'll find it. So I talked already about the China figures. Uh, we have first half figures from Ferguson's tomorrow. UK unemployment uh, and, 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 um, and average earnings are gonna be out uh, on Tuesday. We have the German ZEW figures, uh, no doubt the economic sentiment on Tuesday, no doubt they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be one to watch to say the least. FedEx have third quarter numbers out on Tuesday. Um, the Fed of Reserve have their interest rate decision uh, on, on on Wednesday, but then again we we we've, uh, we all know um, what what we well we all know what the Fed of Reserve have already done. Um, we have similar similar updates from the likes um, from Japan and Switzerland, but you know many of the, many of these organisations have already made it clear uh, what actions they're taking. Um, Acado a first quarter numbers out on uh, on Thursday. Um, we have Darden Reston's group have third quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday, and we have first half figures from JD Witherspoon on Friday. What's interesting about the, these latter two companies is that if you're in the services trade or you're in the kind of leisure trade, leisure industry, if we do get on the route of lockdown, fewer people are likely to be going out to pubs and going out to restaurants. So the updates and the outlook from these two companies could be of significant interest. I'll take a look now, uh, starting off with the indices, the FTSE, the FTSE 100. Um, we'll just talk about the levels we're currently at. We are currently sub 5,000 on the FTSE 100. So it's absolutely painful sell off yet again. As you can see in the last few weeks and months, we've been in a, in a very aggressive downward trend. While we hold below the kind of psychologically important 5,000 mark, it's likely that we could see further losses. If we do push on lower from here, we could be looking at heading down towards 4,800. If we do have a bit of a snap back, and if we can get back above 5,000, and we can build from there, we could potentially find some sort of a, uh, the market might run into resistance in around this zone here, 5,200. There's a couple of occasions that that price area, broadly speaking, uh, so act provide that support. Uh, so if the it's possible that the old support might become new resistance, but it is worth noting the amount of pe the amount of fear, panic, and uncertainty that's running through the financial markets at the moment. Taking a look 
and what's going on over in Germany. Similar situation there. It's been an aggressive downward trend basically for the last month or three and a half weeks, moving absolutely sharp, uh, sharper, sharply lower. Uh, we're currently um, sub 8,400 on the DAX, and we're moving aggressively lower. If it continued to press on higher, lower from here, we could be looking at trying getting sub 8,100 back towards 8,094. Um, these are uh, this is the level last seen in August 2013. So if we press on lower from here, we could be looking at trying getting 8,094. And if you go below that. The psychology important 8,000 uh, would then uh, come on the radar. If we do have a, a bounce back, a rebound in in the DAX, a resistance could come into play in around the kind of psychology important 9,000 mark. But keep in mind we're about we're over 600 points away from that level, but we have seen volatile swings. Uh, if we go north of 9,000, this area here, that um, this zone here, in around 9,364. Could then act as a possible area of resistance. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll take a look uh, at gold. We've seen even gold is losing ground. Um, there, there, there's, there is talk out there that uh, equity traders, traders uh, are taking um, are taking hits in relation to equity. Equity markets are looking to cash in their assets, uh, whatever assets that they, they still hold on to. Gold be one of those assets. Uh, so the reports during the rounds that gold uh, is, is taking a hit on the back of the fact that, uh, that, that that some traders are looking to essentially liquidate whatever actual assets that they have and look to kind of run towards cash. Run towards cash. Um, it's also a, it says a lot about the financial markets, uh, whereby when you have a time when you have when you have a, a major sell-off in a sizable sell-off in gold when it's typically known as a, to be a safe haven. So when even the safe havens aren't so safe, it really highlights the fear and uncertainty in the financial market. So if you look to press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here down around 14.45. Move below that, could take us down towards 14.30. If you do have a rebound, uh, resistance might come into play from this red line here. The eternity moving average, which is just, just south of the 1500 marks, so it's a big psychological number as well. So, that area between the 200 moving average and the 1500 mark, I think, could be an area of, of significance. Seeing as the traders will be keeping keeping an eye on both those metrics. I take a look now. What's going on on the uh, on the oil markets? The oil market has had a pretty terrible run as well recently. Um, we can see that in, in an aggressive move to the downside on the oil market. Um, it's at a it's in rate broadly speaking range bound the last few days but that range has to be fair has been fairly wide um we can see here that we we haven't we've we're off the lows of last week but yet we're still a fair bit away from the highs of last week um if we can continue off the lows of next week there's a possibility uh we could see we could see the market retest the, the highs of last week up around 36 spot 27. But on the flip side, if we do take off the lows of last week, we could be looking at heading back down towards 25 spot 73, and this is on crew. Uh, this is on WTI West Texas Intermediate. Um, if we do get a, if we do break above 36 spot 72 here, that could put us on track towards 40 bucks per barrel. That's. I'll take a look now at Brent. We can see here a similar situation in Brent, but not, notice how the lows in, in Brent today have taken off the lows of Brent last week. Um, so it's, so it was, which suggests to me that the that, that, that sentiment is still very much bearish. If you look to press on lower from here, because we're currently around 30 spot 50, we could be looking heading at, uh, towards 30 bucks a barrel. And if you go below that, we could be looking at, at, looking at uh, testing 27 spot 13. Uh, a level last seen in January 2016. So I'll give an indication of how how um, how um, how bearish sentiment is in the oil market. Uh, if you do have a, have a a snapback, if you do have a rebound, resistance could come into play in around 39, spot 84, or up towards 40 bucks a barrel. Uh, and then if you go beyond that and start to look to fill this gap, 
we could then look to target uh, the lows uh, from the from Friday, the uh, the closing level or the lows of Friday, the 6th of March in around 45 spot 49, the lows are 45 spot 83 is the close. I'll take a look now at the, at the, uh, at the euro versus US dollar. So euro dollar had a fantastic run between late, late, between late, um, between late February um, and into the in, into the middle of March, then we saw an aggressive uh, move to the downside. But notice how euro dollar, fa you know, on a few occasions tried to get below this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, in at 110 spot 67. It failed to get below that, uh, and if you can hold above that metric, we could look at retesting the kind of the 112 area, and then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading back up towards 114, and then back up towards uh the 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 march highs of in around kind of one spot 14.95 in terms of central bank action we've had two sizable interest rate interest rate cuts from the federal reserve we've had no cuts from the european central bank the, it might be now time for the european central bank to look at, at, at do so you know in a few weeks they, they could look to do some other drastic moves um they may they may do that they may not they may wait for, for European governments to to do something, but we've had two moves from the from the from the Federal Reserve. We've, whereas you've had no moves from the European Central Bank, so that that's just something to uh, to keep in mind. I'll take a look now at pound dollar. Pound dollar has been an aggressive move to the downside um, for the la for the last say a few trading sessions. In fact, we fell to a level today last seen. Uh, since October, so I'll give you an indication of how bearish sentiment is. If you look to press on lower from here on Euro dollar, uh, uh, sorry, pound dollar rather, we could look at targeting this zone here down around one spot 21.95. Uh, if we rebound from here, we could be looking heading back up towards this area here in at one spot 24.91. And of course, if you take off the lows here of October, we could then be looking at heading back down towards the psychologically important 120 mark or even the lows that were seen in early September. I'll lastly wrap things up with um, dollar yen uh, just because the Japanese yen has done very well um, out of the, 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 the health crisis is often seen as a safe haven asset or safe haven play and that's precisely what we're seeing on, t on today's session. We're seeing a even though dollar yen broadly moved higher last week, we did see uh, a sharp move to the downside uh, in today's trading session. And essentially, while we hold below this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes into play at 108 spot 24, while we hold below that, let, that, that metric, it's likely that we could see further losses from here. So we could be looking at um, heading back down towards, um, well, it could be looking at heading back down towards the lows um, of of of, uh, of last February, February the um, sorry, apologies, um, the the thirteenth of March, um, in around one o three spot o eight, and if you go below that, we could then be looking at targeting the one o one spot ninety one area. Now, uh, at the time of recording this video, U.S. index futures are in limit down, so that that's why I haven't covered uh, the U.S. The, the Dow and the S&P 500 on this particular video. Um, volatility is so high, we could see intermittent trading uh, on the likes of the, the U.S. 30, the S the S&P 500, the U.S. Small Cap 2000, and the U.S. Nasdaq 100. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.